of the feasibility study by the STO for the expansion of the transit services into Western Gatineau, including a link to Ottawa's downtown. Bienvenue à cette séance d'information technique sur l'étude de faisabilité de la Société de transport de study by the STO for the expansion of the transit services into Western Gatineau, Gatineau including a link to Ottawa's downtown. My name is Ian Miller, and I will be your moderator for today. Je serai votre moderateur pour aujourd'hui. I will be your moderator Councilor today. Councillor Tim Kearney, Chair of the Transportation Committee, will provide some opening remarks and introduce our guests, some STO and city staff. Following the presentation from STO, Chair Tierney will also moderate a question and answer session with members of council and their staff. 15 minutes after the end of the technical briefing, I will moderate a question and answer session for the media. Media wishing to participate can email medias at ottawa.ca, M-E-D-I-A-S at ottawa.ca. Tim Tierney, président du Comité de transport, introduira les présentateurs d'aujourd'hui. Councillor Tim Tierney, chair SEO, of the Transportation Président Committee, will provide some opening remarks and introduce our guests. Following the presentation of STO, Chair Tierney will also moderate a question and answer session with members of council in their staff. Fifteen minutes after the end of the technical briefing, I will moderate a question and answer session with the media. Before I pass things media over wishing to, to participate can like to email. Items, oh, with I think everyone is familiar with Zoom meetings now. A friendly Tierney reminder to oh. place your microphone on mute. To view the city official who is speaking on Zoom, put your view on speaker instead of gallery view. The button is located at the top right corner of the Zoom video screen. You can select to view either the English or French version of the presentation by selecting which screen to view if you click on the screen option at the top of your monitor. If you are on a mobile device, you will need to swipe to make that selection. If you continue to have technical issues, you can also watch the presentation on the City of Ottawa YouTube channel. You can also choose to hear the audio for the presentation in either English or French by selecting the language at the bottom of the screen. I will remind those presenting or answering questions uh, that I will be using both your audio and video feeds. Veuillez changer votre écran au mode speaker en anglais pour pouvoir mieux voir les paroles. Le bouton est situé en haut à la droite de la porte. Oh, the button for this uh, speaking for the speaker is located on the top right corner of the Zoom video. You can select to view either in the English or French version of the presentation by selecting which screen to view if you click on the screen option at the top of your monitor. If you are on a mobile device, you need to swipe to make that selection. N'hésitez pas à regarder la présentation. Then you can follow the presentation si on City of Ottawa's YouTube channel. Par ailleurs, vous pouvez écouter la présentation en anglais. You can always choose to hear the audio for the presentation in either English or French by selecting the language at the bottom of the screen. Je rappellera I will remind those presenting or answering questions that I will be using both Veuillez your audio and video feeds. The presentation is also available in French. I will now pass things over to Councillor Tim Chirvet. Tierney, Chair of the Transportation Committee, who will begin today's briefing. Chair Tierney. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Ian. And uh, who would have thought that uh, my first role as Transportation Chair uh, would be a technical briefing over Zoom? Uh, so um, good morning, everybody. Uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, I want to start off by saying I hope everyone is staying uh, very safe and healthy during these very unprecedented times. Uh, on behalf of the City of Ottawa, I want to welcome my Council colleagues, and I see there's many of them on there, especially my Eastern Bloc colleagues, hello, uh, and members of Transportation Committee, City of Ottawa staff, our guests from the Ville de Gatineau, and STO, as well as our media friends. Thank you for joining us for this virtual technical briefing. Today, we will have the opportunity to hear about a feasibility study that was undertaken by STO for the expansion of transit service in Western Gatineau, a project that will include a link to Ottawa's downtown. For some time now, STO has been looking for the opportunity to make a presentation 
to Ottawa officials on this study, but with COVID and other things happening within the city, uh, this has now become uh, the best possible time to do so. Uh, this also is an opportunity for Ottawa residents to comment on the study plans uh, in this information that will be posted on the project webpage. SDO representatives have engaged with city staff on this transformative project, which could change the way people get around between Ottawa and Gatineau. It also aims to reduce the high number of STO buses and routes currently operating in Ottawa downtown streets. This is a feasibility study that reflects possible new visions for interprovincial transit. However, there are still many steps before this becomes reality, including the support from other levels of government. So this was still several years before shovels get into the ground. Our Gatineau colleagues, and their consultants with WSP have joined us this morning to provide counselors and residents an overview of the study and the options that are being considered. This morning's technical briefing will give members of council an opportunity to hear about the study and ask questions. Following the technical briefing, we'll adjourn for 15 minutes and we'll reconvene for media availability in order to give members of the media the opportunity to also ask questions of the study team. Today's presentation will be delivered by Miriam Nadeau, a, a city councillor in Gatineau, a, and the chair of the STO Board of Directors, and by Patrick Leclerc, Director of Development, Marketing, and Communications for STO. Also with us today, we have Mark Rousseau, General Manager of STO. We have Sandrine Poto from STO, Ferdinand Villebois from STO, Julie Roy from WSP, Vincent Ungar from WSP, and from the City of Ottawa, John Manconi, General Manager of Trans Sur Transportation Services, Vivi Chi, Director of Transportation Planning, Phil Landry, Director of Traffic Services, Pat Scrimser, Director of Transit, Customer Systems and Planning. In a moment, Ms. Nadeau and Mr. Leclerc will begin the presentation from STO. I will ask Miriam to cue our staff for the share of both English and French screens for the presentation when we're ready to begin. For those that are watching, you can also select the languages uh, on your screen uh, as described in the beginning of this uh, presentation. If you're on a mobile device, you'll need to swipe to make those selections. If you continue to have technical issues, you can also watch this presentation on YouTube. You can also choose to hear which language selection you wish by toggling English or French at the bottom of the screen. And now I will hand things over to Ms. Nadon and Mr. Leclerc for today's presentation. Thank you. Uh, merci de nous recevoir. Thank you very merci much for uh, allowing us to speak to you Tierney, today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tierney, Chair of the Transportation It is the first for two cities that an elected official from Gatineau appears before your council for a presentation like this one. Gatineau, this project in itself is a project of firsts, a project that is rooted in a need and a vision, a need that we feel in Gatineau, which you also feel, population growth, growth system and full capacity, need to reduce the pressure and the traffic in our downtown. And we share the same vision to address it as a metropolitan region, a reliable, structuring, comfortable, and ecological alternative to automobiles, a support for economic and social development, a project to meet the needs of the next decades. Il y a ici une occasion à saisir, après les constats du passé, de s'arrimer du it début à la fin dans la réalisation d'un projet, projet porteur et soutenant pour le transport needs, dans nos villes pour les 50 prochaines années. Il y a une ancienne et unprecedented collaboration entre nos villes. Marked in 2017 par la signature d'un agreement pour concevoir et lier nos transit networks, c'est ce qui nous rend possible pour nous être en face de vous aujourd'hui. It is therefore a good omen for this project that we understand each other's needs and that we come together in a vision to meet them. Each day, more than 200,000 crossings are made from both sides of the river. This is evidence enough that we could not imagine conceiving such a project without taking into account each other's requirements. Nous sommes rendus à ce moment-là dans l'étude. 
ou on doit répondre à la question suivante. How do we are at this point Comment in the study, we must answer the following question. How to tie the trips of transit users from Gatineau and Ottawa to and from downtown Ottawa? The options that we are presenting to you today respond to the conclusions of, of the analysis and recommendations made to date. They are also consistent and respectful in the various plans drawn up for the development of your downtown center. In this regard, we are supported by your experts who sit on the technical and steering committees of the current study. Just like those of the National Capital Commission, Public Services and Procurement Canada, City Staff of Getzno and Ottawa, and the Quebec Transportation Department. Obviously, nothing is you, perfect and everything is complicated. The long list of partners in this study is a testimony to the fact that we are working on the most complex public transit project in Canada, a project unraveling in two cities, in two provinces, in the federal capital. Des choix devront être faits, mais nous souhaitons les faire ensemble. For the greatest benefit of our citizens, and our metropolitan We are fortunate well. to create the largest and linking and transportation project in the history of a region, and I hope we can continue to move it forward together. Thank you. Et sans plus tarder, commençons. Or the reduce, so, um, as introduced, we are presenting to you today um, our complementary study to brief you up on where we are right now and also how we're uh, looking at options to integrate it in Ottawa. Next slide. So yeah, here the table of continents. I won't get through it all in detail. You'll see it through, but essentially we want to recap where we are now, what's been assessed the scenarios so far, and also how we're looking at the, the different uh, integration centers into Ottawa. Next slide. Next slide. So as mentioned beforehand, this study is rooted in a need that we have for Gatineau's population, which has grown significantly, particularly in our West End, and that growth is expected to continue. As mentioned, there are more than 200,000 interprovincial crossings daily, and 25% of those are made on public transit. So we need um, to we need for public transit services to increase, and they are also increasing as we speak now. And the, the reason why we need to, to focus on offering better uh, options in public transit is because our road system is operating at capacity and it's been operating at capacity since 2014. Um, so with Ottawa's plan and vision, AMET reduces the number of buses in the downtown. We are currently working so that our current road system and public transit services need to be more sufficient and to meet the needs of the growing population by 2051. And we are therefore working on this reliable and efficient public transit system that is required for the West End of our city. As you can see in the next slide. So next slide. This is a map showing where the, the need is and where the evolution of it is projected in, uh, by 2031. So to sum him up, we have approximately 6,600 uh, 6, tra transit uh, users traveling to downtown Getzno and Ottawa during the morning rush hour. And those numbers are expected to more than double by 2031 with approximately uh, right now 3,500 people heading to the Ottawa downtown. That number is expected to reach 7,000 passengers per hour at peak hours in the morning time of people crossing from Gatineau to Ottawa. Next slide. So the objectives of this study is to find a transit solution that must meet our mobility requirements with current and projected demand to 2051, support our land use and development plan in Gatineau, and also support the region's economic and social development from a metropolitan perspective. Our need for mobility requirements needs to offer reliable and effective public transit service that competes with the use of personal automobiles and ensure efficient service to downtown Gatineau and Ottawa as they are main trip generators. And we also want to see it connected with the Rapibus and Ottawa's major public transit access. Next slide. 
As for the background of this study, this work has been ongoing for quite some time. The study began in, tw in 2010 in the form of a feasibility study. It has since then moved to an opportunity study, and we are now looking at uh, the complementary study that's uh, unraveling as we speak now. Um, in 2013, the study parameters were, were, were modified, and that's when we moved to an opportunity study to really ask uh, our findings into how we can better uh, answer the need that we have for a public transit. And the conclusion of the study that we had in 2017 came to two major conclusions. First, that we would need two axes on the Gatineau side to respond to the demand, and also that um, buses show um, auto congestion scenarios in their mid midterm uh, period of time. So that's why we needed to dig more into a rail option and also be complementary to that metropolitan vision that we have also <clears throat> given the fact that Ottawa has already moved to rail. So that's how we entered the process of moving to a complementary study in 2018. Moving to the next slide. So the complementary study stages, there are four big phases to this uh, study. Um, we are right now in the evaluation of the different options, and that's where we come in uh, going into more details of options and looking at how we can integrate uh, the transportation system, the structuring link into the Ottawa downtown. Next slide. This is a big picture of the, the big phases that we have. Um, overall, there are four stages to the study that's unraveling right now. But furthermore, this is one part of a bigger process all the way uh, to uh, approval at Treasury Board for construction. Um, so the co co current complementary study is part of that broader process. You can see here with the green um, area of, uh, of the slide there where we're in the, the opportunity study was done and the complementary study is part of that. And we've also moved uh, to a certain analysis that have been anticipated to, to find a choice of scenario in, in by the end of 2020, by the end of this year. So at this stage, I would, uh, lead, uh, I would let uh, Mr. Leclerc from the STO um, team take on the presentation. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Nadeau. Um, so one of the uh, most important elements of this uh, study and uh, what makes it so particular is, uh, as mentioned, uh, as Madame Nadeau mentioned before, is the connection of the two downtowns. So it's, it's very important as we survey people and as we concluded the first study that we have that strong link between the two, the two city, the cities and the two systems. So what we did that is particular with that study is instead, although we're providing service to the west end of Gatineau, instead of initiating the study there, we started from downtown uh, Ottawa to see what were the optimal connections. And uh, from that point, we, uh, we looked at all the, uh, all the ways to cross the river and, and to provide that connection. So go to the next slide, please. So when we looked, we actually looked at all the bridges uh, to connect our, our two systems. Um, so I will start with the, uh, the first bridge you see on your left-hand side, the Champlain Bridge, when we're coming from the west end of the city in the Elmer sector, as the first bridge we, we cross. We currently use that bridge to connect our passengers to, uh, to Tennessee Pasture uh, right now. So when we look at the high-capacity transit system, the Champlain Bridge, the, one of the challenges is that it's too far west, so it doesn't allow us to connect to the, uh, to the uh, downtown gets new and then connect the, uh, uh, the smoothly to downtown Ottawa. For the uh, similar reason, when you look at McDonald uh, Carty Bridge, the one on your uh, right hand side, it's too far east. So for uh, people coming from the west end, having to go through that vehicle loop would not be efficient. So therefore, that bridge uh, was not considered for the, um, uh, for the high capacity transit system we're considering. Now, again, from the uh, coming from the west, uh, the next bridge after Champlain Bridge that we cross is the Prince of Wales Bridge. Uh, that bridge has been in the uh, public space for many years now. Uh, there, it's it's a when we look at it, there's a natural connection between the uh, Rapid Bus and and Bayview. Uh, there are a few challenges with that bridge. Uh, one is 
capacity issue, and the other one is how we connect to uh, get you know, to the, how we connect it to downtown. So on the capacity issue, uh, the number of passengers we bring, uh, we we would basically eat up all capacity at debut when there's not uh, enough residual capacity on the system to have all passengers connect there. Uh, so that's one element. The other element, as I just mentioned, is that if we were to get people to use the Prince of Wales, then they would not reach their destination if they go to uh, uh, downtown get to know. And the other element is during the day for the, the crossings between the two, uh, the two downtowns for federal employees, for instance, then they would need to make that big loop going through uh, Bayview, Prince of Will, coming back to the uh, to, uh, downtown get to know if they were to start from the from downtown Ottawa. So that bridge, however, has a potential for a secondary uh, connection. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a good link for future uh, west-south route, but not for a high capacity, high frequency system. Uh, then if we move on to the uh, next bridge uh, going uh, eastbound is uh, Shodia Bridge. Um, that bridge, the, the main challenge is that it's very narrow and there's the, uh, the built environment there with heritage buildings, uh, the ZB development, and it's a bridge that's been uh, identified uh, mostly for active transportation, type of complete street, uh, but not so much for high capacity, high frequency uh, system. So that leaves us with two bridges. We'll go to the uh, next slide, please. With Portage and Alexandra, so we'll uh, continue with the uh, Portage Bridge. There's a very natural connection there between the two uh, downtowns. It's uh, it's a, a central bridge. It has sufficient capacity, and it's uh, and and even for connection, not only the uh, the morning and the afternoon commute, but during the day. Uh, so it's, it it presents a very good option. Uh, when we look at the Alexandra Bridge. Uh, it has potential for a future interprovincial loop uh, in, in a future vision, future development. However, in the case of that study, to provide service for people coming from the west end of Gatineau, uh, they would connect very well to uh, Gatineau downtown. However, to reach their destination, which is mainly where federal uh, offices are in, in downtown Ottawa, they would need to make that loop that would make it, uh, uh, that would that, that would take more time to complete their commute, would not be very efficient, not optimal. The other thing is that if we were to connect through a tunnel to the radio station, it's highly complex in that sector. So Alexandra Bridge was not considered for, again, for the high capacity, high frequency uh, connection in, in the context of that study, it remains a good connection as well to consider active like, transportation and other uh, modes uh, moving forward. Therefore, the recommended bridge is the Portage Bridge to uh, continue, and that's what you will see uh, for the rest of the city. So we'll go to the next slide, please. That is, uh, we won't spend much time on it, just to mention that when we were looking at the uh, at various ways to uh, cross the river, uh, we also looked at, at alternative ways, uh, be it uh, a new tunnel, new bridges. Uh, however, there was not strong potential there, and the main one really is the Portage Bridge, and it serves the needs, meets the demand, so uh, that's why other options were not uh, considered any, any further. Next slide, please. I will get into the uh, scenarios, uh, the scenarios that were uh, assessed. We, we started from a long list of uh, scenarios. And again, as uh, mentioned, Madame Nadeau was always in close collaboration with the uh, city of Ottawa, uh, OC Transpo, and all our partners and, uh, from the federal government and, and, and other partners as well. So we'll look at, uh, if we can go to the next slide, uh, please, at the uh, five uh, scenarios in, in a minute. Just a, a word on the modes that are included when we talk about high capacity, high frequency service. Uh, there's a, we're considering a BRT. Uh, BRT, the vehicles you see there, the buses, is simply to illustrate that we've been uh, looking at every uh, type of, uh, of vehicle moving forward. It will be electric vehicle, and in, in Quebec, that's the direction we're taking. So, be it tram or buses, it's going to be electric vehicle. But in terms of capacity, we looked at uh, the regular 40 foot uh, bus, the articulated buses, the current one that we have, and the bi-articulated buses, although we don't have in uh, those buses in Canada, we also looked in terms of capacity and feasibility. When we talk about the rail connection, the rail uh, system, we're talking about an urban tram, so it's different from the system that you have in Ottawa that has a 
higher capacity. Uh, the tram is a, is a good fit for uh, uh, urban integration. It, uh, it generally uh, across intersections at grade and it can also operate in mixed use or dedicated lane. So these, uh, uh, that technology is used in Waterloo as well as in uh, downtown Toronto, uh, just as uh, an example. So next slide, please. The first one is the baseline scenario. Uh, the methodology that we use for these studies is always we start with the baseline scenario. What it is basically is we look at the current situation and we uh, improve it with all, so all sorts of uh, transit priority measures, be it dedicated line or priority at, uh, at crossings. Uh, and then we see if it can meet the demand. Obviously, if the baseline, the current scenario, improve with, the, uh, with priority measures or to meet the demand, that's what we would go for. Uh, in our case, it doesn't meet the demand. However, it's there. And then we compare all scenarios that are high frequency, high capacity against the baseline scenario. So. That's the first one we start with. Uh, we'll move to the second one. And next slide, please. Thank you. So we have one scenario that is all buses. Uh, you see there are two branches, the one on the uh, kind of the north, uh, uh, northern that, that you see is the uh, Quartier du Plateau. Uh, so there's one branch there, and there's one corridor uh, south as well. So the one you see with the green line would be a scenario where it's all buses. Um, the one you see with the blue line is the same scenario, but using only trams. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. And then uh, we have two uh, scenarios that we call the hybrid scenarios. Uh, basically combining, you have uh, a BRT in one corridor. Uh, the, the one on the left is the, the BRT. Uh, south and then the, the tram uh, going up north and then they meet when they get to the uh, uh, city of to, to downtown gets no and the other one at the bottom then it's just the other way around you have the DRT north and and the tram on the uh, using the sort of south corridor uh, next slide please now uh, we held in uh, June of uh, 2019 we can go to the uh, next slide uh, please uh, a public consultations in uh, get to know on, on these uh, five scenarios. Uh, that was the first time we consulted uh, our citizens there on that particular one. Uh, just a few highlights in terms of the need uh, was clear for a large majority of, of uh, respondents that we need to have that high capacity, high frequency network. Uh, to respond to the uh, to the needs in uh, on the west end of Gatineau, uh, about two third of respondents uh, prefer the tram option. So one of the scenarios, including a tram, they consider it uh, uh, faster, more reliable, but also, and I think it's important to mention, it's the most viable scenario over the long term. So people want to go straight to what will uh, allow us to to respond to the demand over the next 30, 50 years. And then about the connection in Ottawa, uh, majority of respondents consider the, the system should extend beyond uh, Lyon Station to, to get closer to their uh, point of uh, interest. So we can go to the uh, next uh, slide, please. The rationale for a tram component, uh, we know we're not, uh, and, and get to know it's not the big city per se with millions of people. So why do we need a tram? That, that slide illustrates it. Uh, when we're looking at the current uh, number of passengers that are crossing on the Portage Bridge during the peak hour, so per hour is uh, 3,500 uh, people, and uh, it's expected to double basically over the next 15 years. So to meet that demand in terms of number of buses we would need, as uh, you have the numbers there, if we use uh, regular buses, the 40 foot, uh, it's 170 uh, per hour, uh, or if it's articulated buses, 105, by articulated buses, 75 per hour, or in the case of the tram, it's uh, 25 trams per hour to meet the, uh, the demand in terms of capacity. Now, the, the picture you see there is uh, from last winter. Uh, we already faced that challenge of the uh, of, uh, congestion on Portage Bridge. You see it in your downtown core as well. Uh, as uh, uh, Chair Tierney uh, mentioned, uh, rightfully so, we, we, we have that common goal of reducing the number of buses uh, crossing the river getting into uh, downtown Ottawa. Now, the, with the, the only uh, all-bus scenario, 
basically we would not achieve that aim and we could not even operate the system. Now the capacity, the maximum capacity of a dedicated lane is about 80 bus per hour. That is to keep it fluid, have a good quality of service, have a good on-time performance. And with the numbers you see that we wouldn't be able to achieve it. Uh, therefore, it, only the scenarios that have at least one tram component are moving forward because that scenario with all buses is not viable. So next uh, slide, please. So that leaves us with the all tram, as I mentioned. Can go to the next slide, please. And, and the two hybrid uh, scenarios. Now it takes us to, uh, we have these three scenarios. Uh, we can go to the next slide, please. In terms of the integration uh, into Ottawa, that's a, a major uh, component, obviously, of that system. So a few highlights. We'll get into the tram component in, in a minute, uh, but uh, just a word on, on buses crossing uh, Portage and McDonald Cartier with the combine. You know, there's a, a combined loop there. Uh, that we're considering, just to mention that even with the tram system, similar to what you have in, in Ottawa with the, uh, the LRT, you still need to have a certain amount of buses. That is for secondary service, it's the residual buses that will offer a good quality of service to your customers and, and maintain good uh, ridership. So you drastically reduce the number of buses that we cross, you still need to have uh, that as part of your overall plan. We can go to the next slide, please. So the main design consideration in terms of the system requirements, when we talk about the tram, we're looking uh, for the uh, straightest uh, route possible. Uh, we want to have an efficient connection with the train station, attractive systems for riders, obviously reliable and close to their uh, places of interest, and double track, double track. We mean that we want to have a system that will go uh, both ways uh, can go both ways simultaneously. We don't want to have a tram that would have to wait, for instance, on the Portage Bridge for another tram to provide service and then come back and then go. That would not be really uh, efficient and optimal. In terms of the uh, City of Ottawa's plan for downtown streets, we this is where the engagement with the uh, city staff was absolutely key uh, in that study. Uh, so we look at your, your plans in terms of uh, the, the various streets, so Queen Street, be redesigned as a complete street. Um, uh, Sparse Street, there are revival plans with events taking place there. Uh, Albert and Slater uh, will be repurposed to include more active uh, transportation, and there are uh, various cycling projects uh, that are uh, being planned that we're taking into uh, consideration. So we can go to the next slide, please. So just to recap, uh, basically on, on the various uh, uh, streets, uh, where we can integrate the system. Uh, we, we basically looked at everything with the city staff and we were guided by, by, by them on that. And it, we, we went uh, similar to what we did for the bridges through uh, the elimination and looking for the uh, most optimal connection uh, so that we see the current situation and, and what is envisioned uh, for uh, Queen, Albert and Slater and Sparks. So can we go to the uh, uh, next slide, uh, please? Thanks. So that is for the tram. We covered the buses uh, previously. For the trams, we basically have two options. Uh, one at grade, one on the ground. The option at grade uh, would, uh, after we cross Portage Bridge, would remain on the north side of Wellington and then continue up to about Elgin. That's in, in more detail that is being studied. Uh, and the other option is the uh, is uh, low uh, low grade uh, in the tunnel. So on the sparks, what you see there is that after the Portage Bridge, you would cross the Garden of Provinces and Territories through a structure uh, west of Commissioner Street, and then get on the ground uh, under under sparks for a, a tunnel option. That's what's being uh, assessed as well right now. Uh, next uh, slide, uh, please. So uh, uh, an overview of the pros and cons of the two options that are being considered. Uh, the uh, ad grade on Wellington, the pros, uh, makes it uh, really easy to access for, uh, for the riders. Uh, it's uh, easier to, to build, and there's a, a potential uh, component of a, 
an interprovincial loop uh, with the Alexander Bridge and the you know, very long-term vision, as I mentioned earlier. In terms of the, uh, the cons or the challenges we would face, uh, using that corridor uh, means making several compromises from all the parties. Uh, so we're, we're thinking of the North Esplanade, uh, the, uh, the, the bike facility that is planned there, uh, vehicular traffic lanes as well. So many compromises uh, need to be, to be made. There are security uh, challenges as well to work around in terms of the parliamentary complex and adaptation of possible disruptions to demonstrations and events on Wellington Street. We know it happens. Uh, disruption to current traffic and transit service during the construction and the uh, option would lead to uh, more uh, pedestrian crossing Wellington to reach the station or their destination uh, south of uh, Wellington. In terms of the uh, tunnel option on the sparks, the pros, uh, very minimal impact on, on the traffic and surface amenities. It allows for a more direct connection with the old train, uh, although it's not the same tunnel, but you could link the station there on the ground. Uh, it's weather protected environment for transferring passengers, so that quality of service there, and the uh, and it's uh, less uh, vulnerable to uh, service interruptions from external events, as we mentioned, the demonstration and events taking place around Parliament Hill. Uh, the cons: it's a much higher cost than a surface option. It's uh, more complex and and lengthier construction process with higher risk. Uh, there are significant underground constraints uh, on those parts. Uh, the portal uh, would uh, have an impact on the open space west of Commissioner Street, as I mentioned, and the, uh, going through the Garden of Provinces and Territories. And there are possible security concerns as well being uh, adjacent to federal institutions. Uh, so with that, uh, we can move to the next slide, and I will hand it uh, over back to our, our chairman. Yes. So yes, you can move right ahead to the next slide. So right now, um, and that is uh, the announcement that we made on January 30th when we uh, went public with the fact that we, based on the um, progress of the study, we were putting aside scenarios that included all buses, putting it forward um, that we would uh, work on a project that ultimately would have a tram component. Um, and going on with that announcement, we also announced that we were going through um, further analysis of the options for the integration in Ottawa. So that ongoing analysis of options includes uh, the following key issues that need to be addressed for, for those two options. So the vehicular traffic impact in the downtown, the number of stations that are required and the locations, boarding and disembarking issues at the platforms, quality of connection to the old train, security issues, trade-offs and mitigation plan, uh, Mr. Leclerc uh, brought some elements of that. Order of magnitude uh, of costs, obviously that is something that is to take into consideration. And also the public consultation that we want to have part of this process. Um, next slide. So upcoming events in Ottawa. Um, so linked to that, that public consultation component for the two options. So we're looking at online public consultation in June of this year for Ottawa and Gatineau to present uh, the evaluation in the progress and also seek public uh, feedback on those options. Um, and then we're set to come back to Transportation Committee and Council in July of this year to present the recommended, recommended plan for, for the integration of Ottawa. So um, that would conclude the presentation that we have um, on the technical briefing for the um, integration scenarios that we have and uh, the study of the state. Thank you. Great, uh, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nadeau and Mr. Leclerc. Uh, I'll now open the floor to questions from councillors. Uh, and in the interest of time, we're going to limit, uh, limit the questions to two questions per councillor. And as we've been doing this, uh, we're, we're kind of getting used to this now. Uh, we'll go in order by ward. I do see there's quite a bit of participation from our council colleagues, which is good news. Uh, so if you can please keep your questions uh, to the point and uh, also to our uh, representatives from STO, and the project team, if you can also respond as quick as possible, just so we can get through everybody because there's quite a few people. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go to uh, 
I see uh, Councillor Luloff. Do you have a question? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, uh, Councillor Luloff. Uh, Councillor Dudas. Great. If you could just push down your space bar and ask your, <laughs> ask your two questions. Thank you. Merci pour la présentation. Thank you for your presentation. Très important pour it's very important uh, the, that we integrate uh, our two um, transit systems. Thank you so systems. much. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, very wonderful information. I do have only two questions. And um, I'm just curious about the timing. Uh, in addition to coming back with information, what is your timing for the ultimate uh, plan for Gatineau and the integration of, of Ottawa. And I'm curious about the funding. So I don't know that you, you touched on the funding, but what does that look like? Is it a partnership or, what, or is there a integration with the federal and provincial governments as well? Yes, so I can respond to those two questions. So in terms of timing, uh, this study is being funded by the federal infrastructure, infrastructure fund. So the, the phase one, the number one envelope that they set out. Um, so there's a timeline for this study to be completed by the end of 2020 for that funding. So, and we've already gotten an extension. It was uh, supposed to be done by end of uh, last year. Um, and we already got an extension to, to, to give us more time, given this is a complex project. It's never been done before, this level of complication to have such an integrated project, and, you know, as I mentioned, two cities, two provinces, the federal capital, etc. Um, so that sort of explains the timeline on which we are. We know it's, it's aggressive, but it's dictated by, by funding that we have right now for it. Um, as for um, the, the, uh, the unraveling of the project, once that setting is completed, it's an eight to 10 year horizon for it to be completed and actually have ridership embark on this, uh, on this tram. Um, and funding has been, uh, in, um, the, the provincial government has committed to 60% of the funding as it has with other rail projects in Quebec. And we're working with our federal counterparts to have 100% uh, of this project being funded by uh, other levels of government. Great. Uh, any further questions, uh, Councillor Dudas? No, you're good. Thank you very much for that. And thanks for keeping it brief. Uh, is Councillor Harder on the call? I don't see her here. Uh, Councillor Suds, I do not see her here either. Uh, Councillor Elshantiri, Councillor Gower. Great, Councillor Gower, please go ahead. I don't have questions, but I'd also like to thank uh, you for your presentation. I'm very heartened to see the progress uh, that we're making in integrating our two uh, public transit networks on both sides of the river. Thank you. Great, and thank you for those comments. Uh, I'm looking to see if uh, Councillor Cavanaugh is I'm on. here. Oh, great, uh, feel free uh, if you have to, uh, two questions, go right ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, the concern that um, I have is in terms of uh, how much have you taken into consideration traffic going west? Um, we have the new D&D &D site in Bay Ward and um, I see a lot of traffic um, on that. Um, and it would be great to have the transit uh, thinking in terms of the connections there, not to mention my neighbors to Canada, uh, to the high tech industry. Uh, a lot of the traffic I see on the parkway is coming from Quebec and it would be great if they had alternatives. And I want to know how much thought has been given into that because it seems that most of it is, is concerned about going downtown, which is not where uh, most people work. Yes, uh, thank you for your question. I'll just let my technical expert respond to that. Yes, uh, it's a good question. And the, uh, just to mention, that's why we're looking at uh, various points of connection when I talk about the secondary uh, connection as well. We know that in terms of the riders, about 80% uh, of our riders uh, the, uh, end there in downtown Ottawa when they cross the river, about 20% will make a connection. However, uh, we know that there are plans to extend the LRT uh, out west as well in Ottawa. And that's why the connection there is, uh, is key. And we will keep using the uh, Champlain Bridge as well to connect to Tanay's pasture to facilitate these uh, movements. 
And if, if I can just add on to that, since the O-Train has been put in operation, the STO has uh, increased the number of buses it sends to Tennis Fair by the Champlain Bridge. So we are, um, and we are investing in order to increase our offer of service and improve, you know, um, the, the, this, uh, the, um, how we uh, answer for, for the, the needs. And so we're, we're sensitive to those requests and want to make sure whenever we put more money on the table to increase our offer to our riders that we, we take on all of those opportunities. I appreciate that. I think it would be good to do a study because we certainly see the, the traffic coming into to Bayward from Quebec. And uh, we, you know, um, it's normal, they're coming to work, but I think they need alternatives. Um, so um, I think that should be looked at very specifically because um, it is a very, very large uh, uh, operation at uh, D&D. Uh, we're gonna have uh, over 10,000 employees there. A good number of them are from Quebec. They used to work in the East End, now they're working in the West End. So I think that needs to be looked at. My other question is in terms of the Prince of Wales Bridge. Um, I'm very disappointed that it will not be considered uh, soon for um, as a rail connection, but what is the timeline for other uses? Um, well, the, the Prince of Wales Bridge was something that we were looking at seriously. I mean, it was part of the preliminary project that was set out by our mayor back in uh, June of 2018. Um, the fact of the matter is that looking at the data with the experts, um, it was just not the viable option to make sure that in the case of this uh, project, and the need that we need to answer for our West Riders and also people, you know, aiming to get to get to downtown and, and also Ottawa downtown was just not the option that was uh, the most suitable for this particular project. Um, the bridge is owned by Ottawa and our mayor yeah. is also a fan of, uh, you know, moving along with also the project of Mr. Watson to, to make it an active link. So that's something more definitely will be a partner in whatever project is set forward for that bridge and if and looking at it on the on public transit with the buses i mean it is also a natural link with the Rakibus once you know that project moves to rail at some point in time to make a connection there so it's definitely something that we want to keep in our books in terms of future options but in terms of this project in particular um it's just not the most suitable bridge to answer for the need although we did consider it very seriously. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, and yes, I hope, uh, I, I'm aware that it was owned by the city of Ottawa. I just wanted to know um, about uh, the connectivity possible. Okay, thank you. And, and thank you very much, uh, Councillor Kavanaugh. Uh, I don't see Councillor Shirelli. Uh, I'm looking to see his Councillor Eglay on this call. I don't see his face popping up. Uh, Councillor Deans, I don't believe is on this call. Uh, oh, I'm at myself. I'll, I'll quickly, I have a quick question uh, related to uh, the, the branding of the trains. I didn't hear anything really around that. Uh, you know, it, I, think, I think it would be a bit of a challenge having STO driving in front of, uh, in the city of Ottawa. Is there an opportunity to co-brand it, make it like a, 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 a twin city kind of branding? Absolutely, we are extremely open to a signature branding for this project, knowing that it is something that's coming to the heart of the federal capital. And, you know, as I said, uh, firsthand, you know, this is a project that, that is rooted in a common vision. So obviously for it to have a signature branding is something we're, we're up to. Great, uh, thank you for that. Uh, Conseil Fleury. Mr. Chair, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the official report and, and to hearing it in July at uh, the Transit Committee. I'll be able to ask more technical questions at that point. I don't really have any questions because we were briefed last week and I'd like to thank uh, Miriam and her and the STO team for having done that, but let's take the opportunity to put forward a couple of uh, ideas and make uh, and ask several questions as well. First of all, I recognize that, uh, that the, the current uh, old train uh, is uh, problematic, uh, but uh, what uh, we're looking for is uh, an integration of uh, our bus system with uh, the LRT. 
key. Now there are, of course, uh, issues with the stability of the network. We realize that. Uh, but in your slides, you talked about options. Uh, now there was an agreement that was actually signed in 2007. I just wanted to point that out to today. Now, given that uh, you're proposing the use uh, of uh, city land, Ottawa city land, I think it would be important uh, and it would be the right time to perhaps uh, to set up a governance table. I know that uh, STO and OC Transport working together closely. I recognize that our two mayors meet on a regular basis also. But as you know, this isn't a dictatorship, it's a democracy. Uh, we all have a voice at uh, the table. So I was wondering whether a, a, a governance table bringing together uh, the three levels of government on both banks of the river couldn't be created to make sure that all considerations be taken into account uh, in this uh, project. I'm not asking for an answer today, but on our side, I'd just like to tell you that uh, there's a real need for us uh, to, to talk about uh, uh, this issue, including public transit. There are others, of course. I'd also like uh, to make a final point now. I'd like to pick up on what uh, Theresa Kavanagh said. Uh, in her question, uh, the downtown areas on both sides of the river are important, but the federal government, uh, the RCMP, National Defense, and other agencies have started to decentralize out of the downtown core. And as you mentioned, uh, there have been lots of change uh, since 2017. We're seeing this change continuing. So what I would like to ask for is to not just have one point of connection, but several uh, points of connection. The McDonald uh, uh, Cartier Bridge should be used to, to connect uh, to Lee Station. The Prince of Wales Bridge should be used also uh, to connect uh, Portage and Terrasse de la Chaudière to the downtown core in Ottawa, and uh, uh, that uh, people from Gatineau be able to get to the airport uh, quickly, or also to areas in the west of uh, Ottawa. And uh, the details of the tramway option will have to be discussed in more detail. So I would like to call for the creation of a governance table on this. Thank you. I understand that it wasn't necessarily a question, but I will answer uh, or make some points that I'd like to share with uh, the auto councillors who are here with us today. Well, you want integration. You said that the 2017 agreement was just an option. But the slide we pre presented with the highlights of the option. Even if we do have a tramway crossing the bridge, we will still need uh, buses on both sides of the river. Even if you're moving to a system focused on the LRT, the same thing would happen on the Gatineau side. Even if the tram will reduce significantly the number of buses, we saw that on the uh, slide that we uh, showed you, 25 uh, trams uh, compared to 170 buses per hour currently. So that would really require a decrease in the number of buses. The 2017 agreement has to be looked at in its context. Now, the integration, of course, has to be based around uh, the LRT. There's been follow-up and studies done by our teams on that. We want to make sure that we have an optimal service for people on both sides of the river as well. In terms of the governance table, well, there is a, an executive committee governing the study, which is co-chaired uh, by uh, the Deputy Minister of uh, Transportation from the Quebec government and the Mayor of Gatineau. And the Mayors of Gatineau and Ottawa also sit on this committee. There's also a federal representative on it also. Someone from PSPC, um, the government uh, the, the, department, uh, now in terms of, of uh, decentralization uh, of some uh, employment centers, this is happening. There are forecasts that have been done on this, uh, but uh, the downtown course of both cities will be a major destination, despite the fact uh, that uh, some uh, centers of uh, employment are being 
think there's a diversifying outside the city. Or there have to be links which were effective uh, between our two systems, and the federal government uh, is really focusing on the development uh, of uh, public transit uh, to develop uh, new centers of employment. So that's important as well. I've taken note uh, of uh, your desire to see several connection points. Uh, we have tried uh, to improve uh, our service uh, over the past few years. We've invested uh, four million per year. We'll be doing everything we can to increase and to improve uh, the points of connection between our two cities. Well, that's part of an ongoing study in terms of the Madonna County Bridge, bridge and properly serving portage and this is why we have actually opted or recommended the use of the portage bridge. There will be several needs that we'll have to look at, but what we're looking at is to deal with demand in the west of city and serving the downtown course of both cities on both banks of the river. And bringing people across the river at Prince of Wales actually into Ottawa or into Gatineau would be a huge uh, de detour and it wouldn't be anywhere near uh, Terrasse La Chaudière. Thank you very much, Mr. Fleury. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, as we go through the uh, the list, uh, again, trying to keep uh, brief questions and brief answers. Uh, uh, Councillor King, if it's okay, Councillor Brockington has a commitment at 10 o'clock. He has a single question he wants to jam in quick. And I got the thumbs up, so go for it, Riley. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, thank you, Chair Tierney, for this opportunity. Very good. I appreciate this information. And to our presenters from our, our friends across the river, thank you for your time. My question is this. Um, your numbers indicate a doubling of the number of Gatineau residents coming into Ottawa over the next, uh, I guess, 10 to 15 years. What is driving that? Where are these people going? Um, question number one. And question number two is, what percentage of Gatineau residents who come into Ottawa are not going downtown or Tunney's Pasture? How many are actually going further into the city for employment or school? Yes, uh, thanks for your question, Councillor. I'll have my technical expert respond to that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the, uh, the number of uh, people uh, crossing, uh, the, the increase there, we're seeing the, the most important growth in the west end of, of Gatineau, so the Elmer sector and the plateau as well, if you're familiar, when I showed the map, the kind of the north branch, this is where we'll have booming development. So uh, people mainly coming from that part of the city, but also coming from uh, Gatineau and, and, and all. This is what will be driving it. We're facing a major demographic growth over the years. So that's one, uh, that's where it's coming from mainly. In terms of uh, how many people will uh, have their final destination uh, uh, in, uh, in Ottawa and how many need to carry, we look at our uh, fare card system and based on the data we have there, about 80%, the, the, their final destination is there in the, in the core, and then only 20% have to make uh, a connection to go somewhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you for the brief question. All right, uh, on to uh, Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Chair Tierney, and I'd really like to express appreciation to our colleagues and staff across the river and in Gatineau for providing this opportunity for a technical briefing. Uh, my question is brief, uh, but I do want to echo the uh, concerns of uh, uh, my other colleagues here in Ottawa, uh, Councillors uh, uh, Fleury, Councillors Kavanaugh, and I think uh, 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 Councillor Brockington, who are really talking about uh, commuter, commuter mobility and uh, having uh, that data and ensuring that that data is integrated, um, not just for this project, but also uh, taking into account the different uh, uh, modalities of transport buses on both sides of the river and and uh, the O train operations as well, ensuring that we are examining all the interconnections uh, for east west connectivity uh, that uh, really will focus on other employment centers. But uh, this uh, point that I wanted to ask really involves a public consultation. What will the public consultation process look like? Uh, because obviously you're dealing with uh, your residents in, in Gatineau, 
but uh, how will uh, residents in Ottawa be able to be involved in the public consultation process? Um, so the public consultation we're looking at is something that will would be, have to be held online, given the context that we're living right now with the COVID-19. Um, and so residents will be able to send questions and comments. There's um, a link to uh, an email address that will be put out uh, for that to happen. Um, and all of those comments will be transmitted to the team responsible for, for this analysis and will be included in the uh, uh, considerations going forward with the recommendation that will be put to uh, the transport committee and council eventually. Um, I don't think there are more details to speak to. With the yeah, in terms of uh, we're working with the uh, city staff in terms of the uh, consultation, uh, obviously everything. So we're planning for something uh, in, in June, uh, everything that will be will be bilingual. And we're also working on material uh, to make it uh, easily accessible and digestible as well in terms of explain, uh, explaining uh, the various components of what we're looking into. So that will take place in a, in a few weeks from now, uh, sir. And I just wanted to ensure that obviously there is going to be invited particip participation from residents of the city of Ottawa because obviously it's it's such a, a massive impact on on our downtown core. Yes, absolutely. And in, in, in the case, what I was mentioning is targeted towards specifically the uh, people, the residents from uh, of Ottawa, and that's why we're working closely with the uh, city staff in Ottawa. Okay. Very good. Very good. Great. Uh, thank you, Councillor King. Um, I see uh, Councillor McKenney is doing double duty here. She's uh, working extra hard today. Uh, so we'll come back to her a uh, little further down the list. Uh, uh, Councillor Brockington's already spoken. Councillor Menard. Is Councillor Menard on the line? I don't see him here. Uh, Councillor Cloutier. Uh, Councillor DeRuz. Uh Hello, hello, oh, Tim. Jar oh, here. Sorry, here. Sorry, sorry, JC. I couldn't see your face there. Go no, right ahead. No problem. No problem. Uh, no, merci beaucoup. J'ai pas de questions. Je vais vous remercier pour la présentation. I have a question. I just wanted to thank Encore you for your presentation. Et puis, uh, vous remercier pour, uh, pour la présentation, mais j'ai pas de questions. And I have no questions. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jean. Uh, I do see uh, Catherine there. Catherine, are you available now? Great. The floor is yours. Uh, hi, thank you everyone. I'm uh, thanks Tim for accommodating that. I'm on two different Zoom meetings, so <laughs> trying to pay attention to both. So there is a possibility that I may in fact repeat some of what was already said, but I'll try to be brief so that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the decision not to use Prince of Wales is, is disappointing. It's something that I still, um, you know, struggle with, uh, obviously, the fact that obviously on our side that we didn't build a station with the capacity to bring people from across the um, across the river into uh, into our downtown is uh, exceptionally disappointing, but um, that's, uh, that's something that we're going to have to uh, continue that discussion on in terms of uh, in terms of capacity at all of our stations. But I just wonder on, and I'm not sure if uh, Riley had touched on this, but, uh, and this is more a question to our staff really, in terms of buses along Albert and Slater, is that buses still, is the plan still just to uh, you, in, you know, integrate with, with traffic or are we back to looking at um, or considering in any way uh, segregated bus lanes? I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure I understand the, the specific of your question. Are you referring to a particular slide that we had in terms of the routes that the buses that would still have to go downtown would have to take? Yeah, I just want to confirm that the plan remains the same, that the buses will um, use uh, normal traffic lanes that you don't uh, expect that there will be um, a separate transit lane on Albert and Slater. Okay, I, my technical expert can respond to that. Yes, in terms of the uh, engagement we have with the city staff and the plans is to, to have the buses in the mixed traffic. Okay, so that continues to be the same. And do you, and, and in, the, in your new plans, do you see an increase or will overall, will we see it stable or a decrease in buses uh, on Albert Slater? Well, obviously the idea to, 
to bring a tram would definitely have an impact on, you know, not increasing the amount of buses. I mean, if we keep the same pace with the bus system, like I was mentioning earlier, that would mean 170 buses per hour at peak hours instead of 25 trams. Um, would there still be buses going downtown? Yes, there would be. As uh, just as as you have in Ottawa, your buses um, support the rail system. That that is sort of the logic on our side as well. But we're working to uh, make sure that it's as limited as possible to alleviate uh, traffic. Obviously, yes. Okay, thank you. And just uh, on consultations, what's the plan for ongoing consultations um, uh, here on uh, on the uh, Ottawa side? Well, the plan is to have an online consultation in the course of June, uh, targeted specifically at uh, Ottawa residents. Obviously, would still be uh, communicated and open to get no residents as well, given that their point of destination is the downtown too. So obviously, they probably have some opinions too on the options that are being looked at, um, but we're really targeting uh, residents in Ottawa. Um, we're working with your city staff to uh, lay out the, the groundwork in terms of how that's going to that's going to plan out. Okay, yeah, I, I did see that in the in the briefing, but I just wonder, like, will you be coming at some point to a committee meeting? Like, will this be a, a formal um, process in terms of um, our legislative legislative agenda? Uh, hello, um, it's uh, Vivi Chi here, Councillor. Uh, yes. Uh, when the uh, project has uh, formulated a recommended plan, it will come to Transportation Committee and Council for approval. So nothing in advance of, of what will be the final plan, like there won't be an opportunity for that discussion in a, a more formal way? Uh, that like has not... Sir, there would be the public consultation that our colleagues in STO is planning to do, and then we will work out the details of that, uh, how we do it online, uh, how we engage, those things still need to be worked on. Uh, right now, the focus is doing the, the technical analysis, but we will, um, we will work with them to make sure that the, uh, our public get the uh, proper opportunity to um, digest the information and provide comment before recommendations are prepared. Okay, no, I, I appreciate that, but I guess um, my concern is that we seem to be just waiting for a final recommendation, and I think that we as a, a city and city staff uh, have some, um, uh, we, you know, we have, to, we have to reach out ourselves to uh, residents that we're responsible for um, to ensure. So I think that, um, you know, my, my concern is that we're no offense to the other side. This is this is great. We want we want light rail. We want uh, transit into our city. But um, we uh, on, on our side have uh, requirements certainly to do our own consultation. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm hearing that that's that's being advocated a wee bit. So I, I'd like to get yeah some response to that. And if I have to bring it up in a in a different forum, I'd be I'd be happy to do that. Of course. But we do have a responsibility to do our own consultation. I would think these are our roadways. Uh, these will it will impact how people get around on on this side of the river. Um, it will impact green space. It will impact a lot of things. Uh, so I, I think that there is a requirement for for our staff to do our own consultation, uh, even if it's in even if it's in um, conjunction with uh, STO. But at some point, I think that. We have to um, make sure that we are doing our own analysis on what is the best um, uh, recommendation here. And I'm, I'm not hearing that. Uh, oh, well, Councillor. Uh, Councillor, it's John Lanconi. Uh, I, I can assure you that uh, you are correct. Uh, we have made that clear to STO and the chair, both chairs, uh, Chair Cherney and Chair Hubley, the mayor's office are in lockstep uh, with what your comments are. And we made that clear with STO. This is the first time our residents are seeing this and, and, and some counselors. And uh, you know the, uh, we all want the same goal, integration, good environmental solutions, intermobility and so forth. But the impacts on, on the, the Ottawa side, uh, uh, you are accountable as, as the municipal government. And we need to make sure that uh, we have all the issues covered. And Vivi, uh, Pat, and Phil and their team have been very diligent on the technical side. 
And uh, Mark Rousseau, who's the general manager of uh, STO, he's my counterpart. Uh, he, uh, he heard me yesterday on a call that, um, you know, we definitely need to engage our community and have some of that discussion. Uh, because when there are issues, and there always are issues, uh, it will it will be uh, borne by your offices. So I can assure you that we've articulated the same comments. How we undertake that consultation, uh, we will be in lockstep with STO. Uh, the mayors are very supportive on both sides of the river of this project, as are the chairs and as our staff. So we're all congruent on what we want. And uh, I just I just want you to know that uh, we support your comment in terms of ensuring that uh, there's engagement on our side. And uh, it will be a challenge. We're in difficult times and STO is pressed for time, uh, but uh, well begun is half done, as we all say. So uh, we will do what uh, what is needed there, I can assure you. Okay, if, thank you. If I and, can just add on yep. to that. I mean, I'm myself an elected official, so obviously I'm extremely sensitive to the points that you're making, Mrs. McKinney, especially knowing that this impacts your ward more than many others. Um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, it's it said that we, the SCO, are in lock with the Ottawa City staff in terms of how to do this consultation. So we're really on the could. We're in listening mode to what process they, they direct us in putting forward and we'll comply with what is being asked. And so far, that's how things have been unraveling on this front. Thank you. And, and I appreciate that. But I'm just going to reiterate one last time here that you know I am the <laughs> one, one the last time. All right. Yeah, Go I for am it. the yeah I am the ward councilor, and Absolutely. I heard about this for the first time just a few days ago. So yep. Um, you know, so I this will impact the ward that I represent. Um, it impacts other wards too. I don't want to uh, give any impression that I don't know that it doesn't impact the the entire system. Of course, east right. and west. Right. Right. Um, we have a transportation committee that I'm, I'm not part of actually, but. Uh, and, and, and has carriage over this. But mm -hmm. again, it's, uh, it, it is the ward that I represent that, that will have, that will feel the greatest impact at, uh, certainly initially. So yeah. and, I just and, wanna and make sure that, sorry, Tim, I'll just finish and then uh, you can go on. Um, I just wanna make sure that uh, we're kept up to date and this is more to our staff, we're kept, uh, uh, counselors who are mostly impacted are kept up to date step-by-step step on what is happening what the decision points are and how those are being made with the public in mind. It's again, it's, uh, you know, it is uh, our responsibility to ensure that that happens. So. Great, thank you, Catherine. And that's exactly why when uh, we were originally meeting with uh, the chairs and vice chairs, I felt it very important that yourself and Matthew as well, both had that uh, pre-briefing because I, I, I share many of the concerns you have as well. And I don't want people also to think that uh, they're gonna start building tomorrow. That's why I include it in my opening speech. Uh, but uh, uh, there is concern over the consultation aspect for sure. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, but I did wanna go to John Mancone because uh, for a second, it, there seems to be a lot of questions around Bayview Station and uh, specifically on capacity. Uh, I'd like to hear from you, but you're, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, John, but it is a question and I'd like to uh, get a response from you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, I, this is a, look, this is a great project for, uh, for both communities, uh, for both the short term and the long term. And uh, I just want to clarify some things because there seems to be a bit of confusion on a couple of fronts. Um, on, on the integration with Lions Station for the buses, I can assure you that we have a written deal between the two mayors and that will be occurring. Ottawa had to delay that uh, because of uh, some of the issues with our service. Uh, but uh, Pat is dealing with Pat Leclerc and we are, are telling them that uh, we are anticipating our LRT will stabilize. So those buses, Council Flitty, I know that has been a big, big issue for you and I respect that. That will be occurring in the short term. Uh, we will be integrating at Lyons. So Councillor McKenney, Councillor Flitty, that impacts you the most. We will connect up with you when we have a firm date on that. I don't want anybody to think that that is somehow off the table. It is part of this long-term solution. Um, secondly, on Bayview, I, I'm hearing some comments that I just want to address straight up. And I'm gonna turn it over to Pat because the, the Prince of Wales connection, we all respect uh, what that potential vision could be or could not be and so forth. This is not about a station being ill-designed or not able to accept STO's program and so forth. And STO and their team and their consultants have done a phenomenal job at looking at all connection points and we were in lockstep with them. 
This is about uh, train capacity. And as all of you have said, or many of you have said, is our travel patterns in our community are dispersing. And you have to remember that when our LRT system was designed, it's, all, it's going on to almost 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. And things are changing. The DND comment that uh, Councillor Kavanaugh has brought up, we're working with STO and they're responding about what buses should go to uh, further west rather than bringing them into the core. The connection up with Lion Station and so forth. Uh, the issue on Bayview, the Prince of Wales Bridge connection is, do you really want to invest a lot of capacity and not be able to do future LRT systems in Ottawa and bus systems for a very short segment of a connection from those passengers in Udaway, which a couple of things, yes, some of them are going downtown, but as some of you have said, are going to other parts of the community, further west and further south. So I want Pat, if I could share, just to quickly summarize the issue of the Prince of Wales. None of it is because somebody does not want to connect there, both on the Quebec side or on the Ontario side. This is about integrating at the right connection points and building a system for the future also. So Pat, could you summarize the issues of uh, the Prince of Wales, why it can, cannot connect for this portion, but as our partners at STO have said, it can be used for future uses, future electrification of buses, connections, uh, multi-use pathways and so forth. Pat? Yep, thank you, John. Um, so I, I can give a few comments about this uh, in a number of categories. These are all focused on, or these are mostly focused on the effects on uh, City of Ottawa residents and City of Ottawa transit operations. Uh, the first, the, the most obvious is that today with the service that we're running, we have not built capacity. We haven't bought enough trains to provide uh, capacity to move people from Bayview into downtown, that short distance on on the Confederation line. We can, uh, if the if all of the people who are now traveling uh, on STO were to be brought into, into Ottawa uh, over the Prince Wales Bridge and were to transfer at Bayview Station, we would need to buy more trains, add more service, and um, that would be a cost of several tens of millions, possibly in the hundreds of millions of dollars just for the city of Ottawa to buy enough train capacity to move the people that short distance from Bayview Station into downtown. Uh, the reason that we've got the bus connection plan for Lion Station, the reason that the STO's current plan will work for the City of Ottawa on the financial side is that it introduces, uh, east. It, it carries people beyond the busiest point on O-Train Line 1. The busiest point on that line coming from the west is between Bayview and Lyon. People are getting on the trains up until Bayview. People start to get off the trains from Pimacy and Lyon on into downtown. And the same is true on the other side if we were talking about uh, anything in the Herdman to uh, University of Ottawa range. Um, in the future, if we look to, you'll, you'll recall that uh, the design for O-Train Line 1 is not for today's operation. It's for many, many decades to come. And even though we're carrying about, well, if we go back to uh, pre-March, we're carrying in the range of 9,000 people um, per hour per direction. We've got a service once it's fully delivered by RTG, which can carry us in the 10 or 11,000 people per hour range. But the, the system is built, stations are built, the tracks are built, and the control system is built to accommodate much more frequent service to carry up to 24,000 people, uh, which we will not need for decades to come. But that's 24,000 uh, a capacity, sort of the size of the pipe through which we can move the people uh, move the flow of people into downtown and out of downtown in the afternoon. That's 24,000 people to be uh, moved from all parts of Ottawa. If we introduce into it the people who are traveling from STO, and as you heard from uh, the STO and the Ville de Gatineau, that's up to 7,000 people an hour. If they were all brought into Bayview Station and moved to uh, the Confederation Line, that would take up almost, uh, it's, I think it's 29% of the total capacity of our line. That would mean that there is growth in the future. This is decades out, uh, but there would be growth in the future in the P and Barhaven, Stittsville, Canada, which could not be accommodated. And it would then be time for the city of Ottawa to build another uh, east-west corridor to move everybody into downtown. If the STO proposal here 
uh, were to go ahead, those people are brought directly into um, downtown Ottawa, and they are not putting that pressure onto the Confederation line, and except if they're transferring to go in different directions. Councillor Kavanaugh's example of someone who's coming into uh, downtown, connecting at Lyon Station, going west to BNB or Canada North. The other example of someone who's coming in, transferring at Lyon or at Parliament Station, and going to the Via Station or going to uh, La Cité Collégiale. So that's some of the information about capacity. Um, the next category is about customers. You've heard uh, uh, Madame Nadeau and Patrick talk about uh, the connections and the need uh, to carry uh, the people from the west part of Gatineau to their busiest destinations, which are downtown Hull and downtown Ottawa. But also for the city of Ottawa, we need there to be a good connection from our transit system to work destinations in Gatineau. And uh, a bridge crossing the Porta, a, a service crossing the Portage Bridge and then turning left to go near Les Terrasses de la Chaudière does that for our customers, whether they're traveling from the east, the west, or the south, or, or just walking in from, from downtown. A connection, if, this, if we were to build a line from Aylmer or Le Plateau into Bayview Station, that would not do anything to help Ottawa residents who are traveling to work in Gatineau. And there's thousands of Ottawa residents who uh, travel to work in Gatineau every day. They would still be uh, needing to do what they do now. And we would still need to run buses across the Chaudière Bridge and across the Portage Bridge um, like we do now to carry those people. So that would that, that would not advance the city's uh, um, uh, interest in reducing the number of buses in downtown as much as the current proposal, the one you're hearing about today. There's a, a, a basic um, transit economic issue about tr trying to use your assets and your resources to, the, to do the most, uh, um, provide the most transportation, use them as, ma as much as we can to get as much um, travel as we can out of our resources. If we were to put trains onto the Confederation line just to move people from Bayview into downtown, that's a a trip of about four to six minutes. We have to run those trains all the way from the west end of Ottawa, all the way to the east end of Ottawa. With the, the tracks we're building right now for stage two, those trains would have to run from, uh, there's extra trains that are put on just to carry the people from Bayview, all the way from Lincoln Fields to Blair. So that would be a, a trip of about, uh, I'm gonna guess about 40 minutes. Maybe it's 45, it's something, It's it, 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 it's a long time moving that train down, moving it back just to give enough capacity to move people that short distance from Bayview to Lyon because at Lyon there is space already. And uh, to go back to the earlier points about the Prince of Wales Bridge, um, it, it, it does remain a very good uh, potential for a future connection. It remains a very valuable secondary connection. It doesn't uh, for all the reasons that uh, that I'm talking about now and that uh, the STO is ta has talked about earlier, it doesn't meet the uh, the needs of the current study or for the current project. It doesn't provide that connection into downtown Hull or downtown Ottawa, but it's, there's some very valuable connections that will be possible in future if uh, any transit facility, whether it's an extension of something on the Rapid Boost Corridor, whether it's an extension of something on O-Train Line 2, the Trillium Line, um, that will allow people from all parts of Gatineau to get to Carleton University more easily, to get to um, federal workplaces uh, around uh, Confederation Heights, to get to the new hospital at Carling Station, to get to the airport, um, and to make a connection to uh, O-Train Line 1 to go west if they're going to DND or to Canada North. So as a secondary line, the Prince of Wales connection into Bayview um, has a lot of potential, uh, uh, but my suggestion is that uh, when you're designing uh, any network or any service, you would design you would uh, design and construct the busiest, the most important part first, and a uh, direct connection into uh, from the west of Gatineau into downtown Hull and downtown Ottawa does that. Great, uh, thank you for that brief response. Um, 
Uh, on that, I, I know there'll be a million more of those technical questions between now and the time we get this to transportation committee. Uh, so um, as, uh, as we have more questions coming up, we'll make sure that we get responses to our council colleagues. Uh, I have Councillor Hoobly and then Councillor Luloff. I caught him off guard at first. I'm, I'm gonna call it out. He actually goes, oh, I did have a question. So you'll go at the bottom of the deck. Okay, Matt, uh, Councillor Hoobly. Thank you, uh, Chair Tierney. Uh, I just have a, a couple of questions. And one of the things uh, that Councillor Tierney and I have discussed about this one is, where's the funding for this coming from? Like, do you have a, a solid commitment from uh, the federal government to fund this project now? The project has already been uh, submitted as part of phase two of the infrastructure fund for a public transit uh, projects. So we're in discussion with our federal counterparts and we've already had uh, the, this project is on the, the premier of Quebec's shortlist. It's one of the five projects that he's, he's putting out as uh, uh, in, in terms of electrifying transport and prioritizing transit. And, and we've had a commitment to, to uh, to the same level as has been made by the provincial government to other rail projects, which is of 60% of the funding. So that's that's on the Quebec side and we're working with the federal counterparts for the remaining to have this project uh, funded at 100%. Uh, thank you, because uh, like on behalf of all the residents of Canada and Barrahaven uh, in Ottawa, uh, there's going to be a concern here about how this is all gonna queue up. Uh, phase three of our LRT project was to bring those large communities into and connect them with the current system. Uh, if we have um, this project going on, we're going to need to find out from our federal counterparts what's the impact on our phase three stuff. The um, other question I have for you on this is, uh, this is a lot of construction on the Ottawa side. And I'm just wondering um, how that's going to work. Like who's going to do that work? Who maintains the trains when it's in Ottawa? Uh, because uh, clearly we have different rules between the provinces on how things work. So I'm just curious as to where you see that going. Yes, those uh, are extremely pertinent questions and we're asking them ourselves and we're digging into them. We're drilling into uh, sorting all of that out. Um, like I said, it, it's a complex project. It's a first having a project like this one being put out um, in terms of the fact that it's in two cities into different provinces and so on. Uh, but we'll have these questions as we move along and search. But we're definitely looking into them. So uh, along when the consultation takes place or afterwards? It will be further out in the study, but we are working on those as part of the process right now. Okay, and then just one last comment, uh, uh, Chair Tierney, is uh, when we unveiled our LRT, part of the big selling point for a lot of taxpayers was that it was going to get buses and cars off of the road downtown in Councillor uh, McKinney's ward. Now here we are with a second train project, independent train project going through the core and we're still going to have buses on those streets. Uh, I'm wondering more from our own folks, can we not have any influence here or do anything to try to get those buses off the street if we're putting trains on there? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hoobly. Uh, I'm not sure who would like to answer that one. I assume, is John still there? Yes, yes, uh, uh, to the both chairs. Uh, so uh, the, hence my point about referencing uh, Lyon Street uh, connection, uh, Chair Hoobly, that is a, um, a, a deal between the two parties. And, and again, uh, you know, uh, we, we want that to happen very soon, as soon as our train system stabilizes. That will get uh, a lot of STO buses out of the core because they will loop in that area uh, and uh, go back to uh, to, ST, uh, to the Quebec side. Uh, and then uh, with this LRT that they're putting in, uh, there'll be even further reductions. So it, it's significant in uh, in scope and scale and numbers. We need to implement that line connection, and there will be a very noticeable difference in the downtown core. Uh, the the only remaining buses uh, that will continue 
our uh, Semestio buses that will stream through to uh, to connect to Rideau and uh, University of Ottawa, which would be too much of a walk if you were to get off at Lyon Street. And that was based on some very good planning between the two parties and obviously some of our OC transport local routes and, uh, and the night routes. So a, a very significant reduction at key points. Great. Th thank you for that, John. Uh, Councillor Luloff. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Pouvez -vous parler de la Thank you very much. De Could you talk about uh, the ability of this project, project to, to increase the number of buses on both sides of the river? I represent a bilingual Bourbourg community uh, in the east qui with le, many uh, uh, public servants crisscrossing the river moment, on a daily basis. Uh, they have to take at least two buses and a train at this current juncture, and I'd like this to be made more efficient to actually deal with the strangle points. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui se rendent au travail à pied, mais on sait que ce n'est pas toujours possible en hiver quand il fait très froid. Merci. Merci pour votre question, M. Lulov. Well, thanks very much for your question. If I understand your question correctly, what would be the frequency of the tramway? Would it be more frequent service than what we currently have with buses? That's the question you're asking? Yes, it is. Well, in terms of frequency, it really depends on whether you're talking about about, uh, 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 là, the rush hour le, or not, uh, uh, we have a frequency of about, uh, we have a frequency Donc, that we intend to increase. Uh, thank you very much. My What's, second uh, question the now. total cost uh, of this project? Uh, and do we have any indication from our federal partners that they're willing to help fund it? Um, it's too early for us to put out a cost at this point of the project. That will that is something that it will be refined throughout the ongoing study and will be put out as at the end of the study. But I, I cannot speculate on the, on the estimates at this point for the projects that we're looking at right now. Um, but as for the federal counterparts, as I mentioned, we've already uh, submitted our request for funding as part of the federal infrastructure fund, the phase two. Um, and we're working with our counterparts. There's already been um, um, engagement said in terms of, you know, this project is being well received by our federal counterparts, but it's a matter of, uh, of, of, of uh, concluding on the, on the financing of it. Merci encore. Well, oh, great. I want to uh, thank all my council colleagues and everyone that's participated. Uh, this is a very well run uh, technical briefing. There certainly will be a lot more questions uh, going forward. So again, I want to thank uh, our Gatineau colleagues as well. I actually had a suggestion uh, from Riley Brockington. It'd be great to have some of our members of transportation committee uh, kind of go visit your facility post COVID and, uh, and check your facilities out. So if you're amenable to that, we certainly would love to do that. Um, and uh, we look forward to the rest of the analysis. So that concludes today's technical briefing. I know media are chomping at the bit to get questions in, so let's not hold them up. We're going to adjourn uh, for 15 minutes, and at that point, Ian Miller will moderate uh, media availability. A grand merci. Have a good day. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Et bonne journée.
follow up. So this is just for media. And also on the Zoom screen, you can choose the interpretation icon to select the audio feed in your preferred language. Nous allons maintenant répondre aux questions des médias pour we will now invite the media to ask their question, question, one question and one follow-up question. You can assign the, the interpretation icon to choose the language of your choice. And again, I remind you to remain on mute. And je vous rappelle de rester en sourdine jusqu'à ce que... Now with 1310 News. Hello, everyone. Just want to make sure you hear me okay. Yes, you. Um, so, um... Much of the discussion around uh, ridership doubling in 15 years or growing was done pre-COVID. So has the pandemic changed those calculations? We hear many people who've made the work from home. Uh, that transition has been quite seamless. So many employers may decide to keep that going. How does that affect you in the future? It is. Hi, this is Miriam Nadu, um, head of the board speaking. It's too early to assess that, that type of... Uh, of situation with the current project that's uh, under review right now, um, but obviously we'll keep um, we'll we'll follow the situation. But it's uh, what's happening right now has to put in jeopardy the, the necessity for this project. Perfect. And just to follow up, uh, you've mentioned that a lot of your growth in Gatineau is in the western end, so Aylmer, Plateau. Uh, would it just not be easier to make a connection, let's say, over the Champlain Bridge or near Prince of Wales, since it gives you kind of an option as a passenger to, you know, get to Tunney's Pasture, and then you can go east into downtown or west into Canada. So it kind of gives passengers a lot more options where many people and companies are working. Why does that not make more sense? The major points of destination for our riders is the Gatineau and the Ottawa downtowns. And when we're talking a high efficiency, high frequency, a structuring a public transit system like this one, we're looking to get them the, the fastest and the shortest way to their point of destination. Uh, in that regards, crossing at the Shopland Bridge or the Prince of Wales Bridge is a too far off for those destinations. And for riders on both sides of the river, if you take, for example, someone living in the downtown Ottawa area, um, looking to, to move to uh, Terrasse Chaudière, um, having to go by the Champlain Bridge and then all the way back again on the Quebec side to the city center uh, is definitely a detour for them. So that's the reason why these, uh, part of the reasons why these two bridges were, were put aside, especially for the Champlain Bridge is because they're too offset. Um, that being said, the STO is really uh, aware of uh, and uh, sensitive to all the opportunity to uh, um, improve on the connecting points with the uh, current uh, OC transport system. And as part of the uh, service investment that we've made uh, since the old train has been in service is we've actually increased the number of buses in the West End moving on the shop line bridge to get to Tony Spacer. So, we're looking to respond as much as we can to the diversity of needs, but in terms of, um, you know, where the, the crunch of it is, where the major needs are and the major points of destination, um, those two options that you've mentioned, we're not responding to that need. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Hey, merci. Uh, 100.4 uh, Outaouais. Oui, euh, yeah, Yannick oui. Saint-Denis du 147. Yannick Saint-Denis de, from de Monsieur Fleury, 104.7. Monsieur Fleury, on a question, là, Ottawa Councillor was asking a question peu, about peu, uh, the agreement of 2017. Et, uh, Could you remind aussi, us the uh, content of this agreement and explain how et, uh, it will be complied with? And second question, you can answer at the same time. You talk about the 3,500 users that cross the bridge, du portage bridge every day. Is it 3,500 for transit uh, or 3,500 the uh, general movement? Uh, uh, Um, Thank you, Mr. Sidney. The 2017 agreement is the agreement signed by both cities regarding the, uh, our transit system and their alignment. Uh, part of the agreement 
revoir la desserte au centre-ville d'Ottawa. Le service de in downtown Ottawa, once the light rail would be in operation, uh, il a volonté toujours là et c'est toujours dans nos plans de faire. Still are willing to uh, évidemment, il y a eu des. Bon, on but comprend qu'il y a eu des, des retards dans la livraison du train léger. There were delays uh, in the delivery uh, of the light uh, the train. So we're working with both teams to see when would be the best time to to do what we plan to do. Pour ce qui est de la deuxième question, les 3500 passagers à l'heure aux heures de pointe du matin. Et la projection est que ça va plus 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 Is it, is it for CBC or is it Audio Canada? Uh, CBC. Okay, thanks. I don't want to take up uh, someone's okay. turn. Um, I have a lot of questions, so I'm trying to limit them. Um, I was struck by the fact there are no price estimates, um, even though you've asked for funding. I mean, obviously, the difference between running trams on Wellington and uh, in a Spark Street tunnel, those costs are going to be very different. Uh, even when you go out to consultation, you know, shouldn't you have some idea of what the costs might be? Um, so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about uh, why there are no estimates and and you know how conf how much you are uh, uh, thinking that you have any funds committed because it doesn't sound like there are any at this point. Hi. Um, well. There has been an estimate put out as part of a preliminary pro preliminary project set out by the mayor of Gatineau back in the June 2018, and that preliminary uh, project had, and its preliminary routes were estimated to 2.1 billion, and it is based on that that we've uh, obtained so far the engagement of the provincial government of up to 60 percent of the rail project that we're working on right now. As part of and the, Miriam, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that 2.1 billion was that for the tunnel option or which option was it for? I apologize, I don't know the 2018 estimates. Yeah, so the 2018 preliminary project and preliminary routes were actually put by the mayor out in the public space, and that was a, a vision to have uh, the train cross at the uh, Portage Bridge and the Prince of Wales Bridge. Um, so it's no longer. Uh, uh, in the specifics, the same project that we're talking about now, but it's still the same scale in terms of kilometers and, you know, trying to uh, service our Western riders to both downtowns and trying to link it uh, with the uh, old train uh, in Ottawa. So that 2.1 billion, uh, you know, we knew that it would need to integrate in Ottawa. Uh, but as part of the study that's been conducted right now and the options that are being analyzed right now, those are which uh, we do not have the estimates. Uh, um, uh, the estimates uh, so far. Right now, we're at phase three of the uh, study, which is uh, the comparison of the different options. And when we'll move to phase four of the current study, that's where we'll get into cost estimates. Okay. And the other thing I was uh, going to ask is that. Um, uh, you had brought up that uh, in your consultations, um, the uh, Gatineau passengers have said that they would uh, like the uh, Gatineau system to go beyond Lion Station. And I, I'm not sure how that would work. So can you explain that a bit? Where would they like it to go and how would that work in a tram system, for example? So the consultations back in June of last year on the, were actually on the five scenarios that we had and we've briefly went through today. Um, uh, those with the all bus, just to increase the bus system we have now, all tram, and then the two hybrid scenarios. Um, and some of the questions that were put out were indeed that which mode they preferred and if, if you know, once on the Ottawa side up to where should it go? And most of them um, expressed a preference for it to go further than Lion in terms of how to do that. That's part of the analysis that's being conducted right now in Ottawa with the two options that were presented today, one being on surface on Wellington and one being a channel uh, on uh, under Sparks. We'll go now to Global News. 
Hi there. Uh, just wondering, uh, I know we are in the preliminary stages so far, but when it comes to procurement, who would be leading that process? Is it uh, the, the Gatineau, the city of Gatineau, or would, uh, given all the funding coming from the province and potentially the federal government, would they be playing a hand or even leading that process? So right now it's on the Quebec side that the procurement would be done in terms of uh, going forward and you know putting uh, sh shells in the ground and so on. We're we're looking at those questions right now and will uh, uh, in the course of things be able to answer those questions more specifically. But it's uh, too soon to tell yet. Okay, and, and just a quick follow up uh, as you're considering that, is there any uh, deference given to getting the city of Ottawa specifically involved in the procurement? We, we've had a lot of concerns on, on train procurement on, on our side of the river, so just wondering if that's a consideration that's being made. I'm sorry, I'm going to try to get your question. Could you is, is the city of Ottawa, are you considering including the city of Ottawa specifically in any procurement uh, process to, to actually get the contracts out? Who's going to be building this, that whole process? Well, it goes back to the first answer I gave you. These things are being looked at. It's really soon in the process. So as we move along, those are the kind of questions we'll be uh, drilling to get answers to. But so far, it's too soon to tell. I don't know if my yeah, maybe if I may add, it's uh, Patrick uh, Leclerc from BSTO as well. Uh, just uh, everything that is done in, in that study is done in partnership with the uh, City of Ottawa, OC Transpo, the NCC, PSPC as well. So obviously, anything we would be doing, even when we uh, develop a, um, a call for, uh, for a proposal, uh, we do that jointly. Everyone has input into that. So all the steps moving forward would involve all the partners. Okay, thank you very much. Oui, bonjour. Uh, Hello, everyone. Yes. I don't know who's in the best position to answer my question. Perhaps uh, the person from uh, OC Transport, the person from STO, but several councillors have raised their disappointment today, even on the Ottawa side. Le corridor du, the du disappointment Prince with the fact uh, that the Prince of Wales Bridge has been uh, eliminated from uh, the study. I understand that uh, there's an issue uh, with capacity at Bayview. Don't you think it's simpler to increase the capacity of Bayview? It might be less costly un, un rather than having to build a tunnel through the downtown core of Ottawa. Well, I'll uh, start after, off with I'll answering. The folks in Ottawa answer, uh, Ensuite, je vais aux gens de the Ottawa councillors have thanked us and they said how important it is to actually undertake this project. In terms uh, of the cost of a tunnel versus uh, the, another scenario, we're doing that analysis uh, currently. So we're, we're, we're not yet at the estimation of cost uh, stage yet. We have to consult uh, all the people before we even get to that stage. In terms of the Prince of Wales Bridge and the Bayview Station, why we didn't offer that uh, opportunity. It doesn't uh, repeat uh, the need uh, for this specific project. That's the reason. I'd like to ask our partners from Ottawa to uh, further this answer. Uh, I'll answer in English. Good morning. Um, the, the question for the city of Ottawa is uh, at, at uh, on Confederation Line 1 is not about Bayview Station. The station uh, is configured for its um, current uses. It is being reconfigured with the Stage 2 project for uh, its upcoming uses and could be reconfigured for any future use. The question for the city of Ottawa is um, are, are really two. What is the best use of the capacity that we have built uh, between um, baby station and downtown on the Confederation line? Is it better for that capacity to be preserved to accommodate future growth uh, in the P and Barhaven, Canada, and Stittsville? 
uh, or is it better for that capacity to be devoted to people traveling from Gatineau, the short distance into downtown Ottawa? The second question for the city of Ottawa is, would a connection uh, by a line from the west part of Gatineau to Bayview Station help transit customers traveling from Ottawa? Uh, and uh, the fact is that it would not help as much as uh, the proposal that the STO has made here, which would allow people to transfer from all parts of OC Transpo to go to workplaces in, uh, in the Hull sector of Gatineau. Parfait. Uh, merci, Mr. Scrimger. Thank you very much, Mr. Scrimger. Uh, question que, que, I have que uh, another question I'd like to ask you donc, about this project. Je, je comprends que ça va être financé well, I understand that uh, it will be funded par l'ensemble des, des, des travaux par la ville de Gatineau you know, by the city of les, Gatineau. Les, les, les subventions qu'on va recevoir du uh, provincial et fédéral. And the federal government. Je me demande juste d'un point de vue légal I'm just wondering, euh, legally speaking, Que, comment ça va fonctionner de How will it work? avec des, des fonds de la province You're going to be funding uh, this project, uh, this project uh, which will actually involve construction on the Ottawa side, but it'll be funded de, with uh, money from the euh, province of Quebec. How will this be organized? Um, Ben, écoutez, c est, c est, well, look, est un qui this à is a project which is designed to meet the needs de de Gatineau, for qui, Western Gatineau residents and for passengers coming from the rest of uh, Gatineau. And uh, because of the, our geographical situa Donc, geographic uh, situation, uh, there are two provinces, two cities involved. Uh, so both parties who want uh, this uh, project uh, to, to go forward. The federal government wants us to go forward because many of the workers uh, grow, you would use the system on a daily basis to go to work. Uh, uh, one of the goals is to reduce greenhouse gases, uh, to uh, increase uh, the uh, access to employment centers as well, reduce the number of buses on our streets. Uh, it's still very early in the, in the process, but we're working with the federal government uh, uh, through uh, PSBC and uh, the Quebec uh, Ministry of Transportation and the City of Ottawa. It's a complex project. It's a first uh, in Canada. We're learning as we go and we're adapting as we go as well. But at this stage, uh, Nothing really seems uh, to be problematic about funding coming from the province or from the, the federal government, the Ottawa citizen, the citizen of Ottawa. The final check if we have anyone on the line from Ottawa citizen. Radio Canada. TVA. Yeah, Louis Charles de, Radio, de TVA. Well, from TVA. Do you have an idea of the number of years it would take to complete the construction process for both the scenarios and on the Ottawa side? What would be the main the main difference uh, uh, for you for you, for you uh, hey, bonjour. Donc, from, uh, based on the two scenarios in terms of the construction options, horizon? Well, on va une, là, sur well, there will be one option, one option for integration. Ans, là, we think it'll take between eight and nine years uh, between the current study and its. De entry de into service, de uh, and that takes the, uh, that's necessary for planning uh, and for the construction process. So, as I've said, we're currently looking at, looking at uh, the study. We'll only do the estimates of the actual cost in phase four of the, of the process. And when we once we've decided on which option will be the best. How long will it uh, actually take to, 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 to decide which project you're going to opt for? 
Euh, je vous dirais le plus tôt possible. On vit déjà well, des, des situations de congestion euh, importantes dans les deux centres-villes. Les congestion dans les deux centres-villes ont vu des taux de congestion exceptionnels au Canada, même en Amérique du Nord. C'est exceptionnel à la nord-américaine. Nous avons vu une augmentation de la congestion qui a été très significative. Nous sommes très heureux de ça, mais ça vient avec ça. Donc, c'est sûr que ce projet-là est prioritaire et important pour la région. C'est pourquoi c'est un projet pour nous. Important project for the region, not just for Gatineau, but for the whole metropolitan area. It's important for all parties on both sides of the river. Now, within 15 years' time, we estimate that the number of riders crossing the Uh, Portage Bridge uh, will more than double. We have more than 3,500 crossing uh, the bridge at uh, rush hour in the morning. We expect that to rise to 7,500 by 2031. So it's clear we need another solution other than buses to bring all these people into the downtown core in Ottawa and in Gatineau as well. Okay, and that's it for today. I thank you very much. Alors, c'est tout pour aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup. Oh, hello, hello. Oh. Hi. Sorry, it's uh, Joanne Quinello. I'm calling. I'm going to use Radio Canada's uh, question, please. Is that okay? Is everybody gone? Uh, I think people are, are signing off. Uh, All right, well, forget uh, it then. Jeez, I hate okay. this system. All right, goodbye. Thank you. Fuck, this is a fucking candy.